Uh, can everybody hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so uh, yes, uh, thank you so much, Amir Bhai, uh, for the introduction. Uh, I would like to add a few comments. Uh, I also believe that uh, in terms of step one, less is more. I mean, you have to keep the resources at a minimum and master them instead of like jumping in, uh, jumping towards different resources. For example, one day you are doing Goljan for Pathoma, and the next day you are doing Petho, uh, you're doing Goljan for Petho, and then you you're doing Pathoma for Petho. So don't do that. Just pick some resource that suits you and then pursue it. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, let's just uh, look at uh, the slides I made. Um, Give me a second. Okay, can everybody see the slide? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, perfect. Okay, so uh, how to take uh, USMLE step one before graduation. Uh, I'm going to focus on the materials and time management. Before we start, another thing, uh, there are different paths to the destination, but as long as the path, path doesn't matter. As long as the destination is the same, it's fine. Like if, if you do Kaplan, someone else does boards and beyond, it's totally fine. There is no like writing on the wall. You have to, you have to make a choice for yourself, like which resource uh, suits you better. Um, so taking step one before graduation is way easier than taking it after graduation uh, because you're still a student. So you have that mindset of studying for long periods of time. Uh, you all, you've already been through some professional exams and you, you can endure uh, the long hours of studying. So in my opinion, it's much easier than taking it after graduation. Uh, also, the subjects are same in both your college curriculum and step one curriculum. You can look at the list of these subjects and not me physiology, biochem, pharma, micropathology, biostat and thankfully no forensic medicine, <laughs> but like these are the major subjects. And as you can see, uh, you have probably already studied some of them. Uh, so that's why it's easier to take it before graduation. Uh, so my strategy uh, for the first two years of my medical school, I had no idea about USMLE. I found out about it via a seminar, uh, like how you guys are doing the seminar right now. Uh, I found it the same way and uh, it's never too late to start, right? Even if you haven't done in the first two uh, or three years, you haven't done anything, it's fine to start now, it's not too late. So what I did was I got the USMLE first aid step and book in my third year, but I didn't read it for a few months. I was too scared of that. Uh, then I studied the Kaplan lecture notes for each subject. I also watched videos, uh, but in this forum, we are not endorsing piracy. So you're be better off uh, doing some some of your own research about where to find the videos or something like that. We are not endorsing piracy. Uh, I also merged my step one preparation with my college preparation. For example, if there's uh, an upcoming pharmacology test, I would study for the test as well as for that particular topic. I would also do Kaplan lecture notes, or I would also do sketchy pharma, sketchy micro, uh, anything uh, depending on my mood. So yes, this is the main strategy uh, for you to follow. In my final year, I took two months for my dedicated study period where I, I was done with Kaplan's. So I moved on to the next stage, like Amir Bhai said, I did USMLE first aid, rev revised it like seven to eight times. So by the time you move on to UWorld, uh, you should have uh, remembered almost like half of it. Like you should have a good idea of what is in the first state. Uh, then we have UL and in the last we have NBMEs. NBMEs are assessment exams, uh, which predict very accurately uh, how much you're going to score in, in your exam and you have to take them before the exam. And UL, uh, some of you might not know it, but UL is like the ultimate question bank tool uh, you cannot do step one without it, and it's an amazing resource, and I'll talk about it later a bit more. Uh, so my study schedule, I studied for four hours minimum every day. But like I never went below the minimum uh, level of four hours, so this is something you have to do. 
and how did not uh, I did not get bored of studying. Uh, this is because uh, step one books are not boring or exhausting like the college books uh, because there's uh, there are review books basically so they have more knowledge and less random PS like if you have been reading some of the books in your first and second year uh, like physiology uh, you have you have read Guyton or anatomy you have read BD Churasi or something like that there's a lot of useless material that you don't even remember right now for example uh, relations of uh, different muscles and etc cetera, etc cetera. so good news uh, step one doesn't have any of that it has all most all the clinically uh, based knowledge uh, so it's very interesting to read and I, I felt very satisfied after reading the step one books uh, so most important book for your preparation is going to be the USMLE first aid for step one book uh, it's called the Bible of USMLE. Uh, you cannot pass your step one without it. And this is a really great book. Uh, in fact, it's been helping me in the house job as well. Uh, you, you also prepare for FCPS with this book. You also prepare for PLEB with this book. So if you don't really want to pursue USMLE that seriously, I would suggest just take USMLE for uh, USMLE first aid for step one and uh, read it by heart, memorize it. Uh, it will help you in USMLE, it will help you in FCPS, it will also help you in PLEB. Uh, so moving on. Uh, I got first aid in my third year of medical college. Uh, reading the first aid helped me in identifying which topics are important for step one uh, so that I had a clear idea of what's going to come uh, in the future, right? Uh, again, uh, no stupid stuff like relations of muscles or like uh, dog experiments uh, kind of stuff that's written in Guyton. So that was a great thing for me. Uh, so whatever topics I used to read for my college curriculum, I read them from first aid as well. Uh, for example, if you are reading community medicine, right? And you are reading the topic of sensitivity and specificity. Uh, you just have to read the same topic from uh, USMLE first aid as well and you're done. Right, so that's pretty easy if you ask me. Uh, then we have Kaplan lecture notes. Uh, most subjects are covered by the Kaplan lecture notes. So as a general rule, Kaplan is the best book for each subject until suggested otherwise. Uh, for example, if, if you want to study anatomy and you don't have any other recommended book, Kaplan is fine. Same goes with physiology, same goes with biochem, ethics, biostat, micro, uh, immuno and pharma. Uh, notice that there's no pathology in this list uh, that comes later because there's uh, another superb book for that as well. Uh, moving on. Uh, so during my second year of medical school, I got the whole set of uh, Kaplan lecture notes, reviewed the concepts before each uh, college exam. Uh, so with this method, by the start of my final year, I was in complete control of the step one concepts. Like I was done with first aid, I was also done with uh, Kaplan lecture notes. I had the idea of how the exam is going to be. I had the idea of the important topics. I had all the mnemonics with me. So I was all set uh, to uh, go into my dedicated study period uh, towards the start of my final year. Uh, that's when I bought UWorld and I was ready. So uh, physiology study strategy i'm mentioning physiology uh, apart from other subjects because it is going to form the base of your step one uh, study schedule because it it's necessary to make good uh, make good development in pharmacology as well as pathology uh, so that's why i highlighted it uh, so medical colleges in pakistan india make you read these huge monster sized books you know the books i'm talking about uh, I think these books don't cover the big picture and uh, they focus on really small things and experiments and lots of huge paragraphs and they're not at all suitable for step one. Uh, so if uh, some people among you are still in first or second year of medical school, uh, uh, there's still time. You can ditch these big books and start using Kaplan. Uh, you need a review book specially written for step one. Uh, remember that. So just don't read Firdos instead. Don't read big books. Don't read local review books like Firdos. Uh, read properly constructed uh, books.
books for step one, for example, Kaplan and BRS. This is another book for uh, physiology apart from Kaplan lecture notes. It's called BRS Physiology. Uh, it has everything you need for step one's physiology and the commonly tested concepts that will, you will see in the advanced phase of study. I mean, it's on par with the concepts of UL. So definitely check this book out. Uh, but uh, as you can tell, I wasn't uh, like a huge nerd or a guy like that. I, I was a very average student and I found Kaplan lectures, uh, Kaplan lecture notes to be a bit more easier to digest and uh, like they didn't have the, those complex, uh, uh, complex concepts like BRS. They had simple language, easy, easy to understand language. So if you're uh, an average student like me, I highly recommend this book for physiology uh, based on my personal experience. Uh, but like I said, uh, every journey is different. Some of you may find BRS better. Some of you may find Kaplan better. Uh, I, I am sure the lower has done BRS and not Kaplan. Uh, but again, uh, it varies from person to person. Don't worry about it. Uh, so uh, get the whole set of Kaplan lecture notes, read them alongside your college books. For pharma and micro, you can replace your college books with Kaplan notes. Uh, fun fact, uh, the book that uh, most of the medical students in Nishtar use for pharma is Mini Katzen. And the authors of Kaplan lecture notes and Mini Katzen are the same. Uh, so I would recommend you to just go ahead and use Kaplan lecture notes for pharma and Kaplan lecture notes for far, uh, sorry, micro, uh, and supplement your college exams with these lecture notes. So for example, if you have an upcoming micro test, if you can manage, uh, just try to include the Kaplan lecture notes, you don't have to memorize, but it will give you a general idea of how step one is like. So again, here comes pathology, like I mentioned, uh, pathoma, one word, uh, this is a super, book for pathology. Uh, why? Because it covers step and pathology completely and pathology is like the 60 to 70% of your exam. And I use this book for my college exams. Didn't read the books, uh, didn't read the college books. Like we have medium Robin and big Robin. Uh, I, only laid, I only read gross morphology from medium Robin. I spent a lot of time studying both pathoma and medium Robin. And from my experience, you can completely ditch medium Robin and you can do Pathoma along with the videos. Don't just do Pathoma book, do Pathoma videos as well. Uh, Pathoma book without the videos is just like Firdos. Uh, you won't have any, any idea what's being written there. So definitely watch videos. Uh, the real important stuff lies in the videos. And if you uh, can, uh, you are there to ditch medium Robin altogether. In fact, I don't remember anything from Medium Robin, to be honest. So yes, Pathoma, take it. So uh, next we have a, a slide on time management. So allocate at least two months uh, at the end of the year for prof. Like you don't want to go overboard with the step one study and get a supply. Uh, that would be disastrous for your career. So don't do that. Uh, have a healthy balance between your college studies and step one studies. You don't have to score really high for prof. Score doesn't matter in the USMLE, uh, sorry, the college score, like the prof score, it doesn't matter. Uh, just pass it with 50 or 60% marks and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. And try to merge the college course with step one course. Uh, for example, the terms or the monthly tests, uh, whenever you prepare for them, uh, take a step one resource for that subject and review it as well. And cut down on social media, uh, like Amir Bhai said, first of all, join some groups. Uh, I joined step one preparation group. And uh, this is where I found all these resources and you get support as well. Uh, you'll see that lots of people around the world are studying for this test. You're not alone and it will motivate you to keep going. And also like cut down on social media generally, like I'm a, huge meme fan. I, I'm, I'm an addict to memes. Uh, so I had to deactivate my Facebook for at least a year because I was studying for step one. Uh, 
so if you have that problem, I either, either it's Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat, try to cut down. Uh, there was a time that I used to lock my phone in the cupboard uh, because I had such an addiction to keep opening my phone after every five minutes and checking my social media feed. So definitely uh, cut down on social media if you have that problem. Uh, Pre-plan everything and learn how to micromanage things. Uh, what this means is that uh, you go to college in the morning, right? Uh, you come back at 2 p.m. You, you must have a plan by that time of what you're going to do the whole day. Like this topic is what I'm going to study, how many pages, uh, and tomorrow I'll study this, this week I'll study this topic, and next week I'll study this topic. Just make a schedule, a rough schedule, like you don't have to strictly follow it, but at least have a game plan, right? Uh, this way you'll able to uh, you'll be able to uh, assess your progress as well and don't compromise on attendance uh, there have been cases uh, not in Nishtar, but in king edward uh, where like 20 to 30 people uh, normally study for step one before graduation and they ended up uh, getting debarred from their prof because their attendance was not up to par uh, so uh, i don't think it's a good idea to uh, compromise your attendance uh, because uh, some lectures might be helpful to your step one, especially the wards, right? Uh, the wards in final year, the medicine ward, it really helped me uh, work on some uh, clinical concepts such as uh, the uh, cardiac murmurs. They were really helpful in that. Uh, so don't ever compromise on attendance, keep it above 75%. Uh, lastly, uh, use Enki during college time. It's an app for flashcards. Uh, you might not know about it, uh, but like if the lecture is too boring uh, or like not very productive, uh, you can just silently use an Enki during uh, the lecture on your phone and keep revising first aid. Uh, if you want, I can recommend some uh, Enki decks and they were very helpful for me. Uh, I used to review uh, them during uh, my college lectures uh, that were not very helpful uh, to be honest uh, so yes that's the time management if you have any questions you let me know uh, summary get the step one review books Kaplan lecture notes and first aid read step one books before the college exams for pharma and micro replace the college book with Kaplan lecture notes for pathology read pathoma and watch pathology lectures don't miss out on these lectures very important make full use of the college vacations. For example, uh, you have COVID now, uh, good for you. Uh, you have ample time to study for step one. Uh, but if you don't have COVID, for example, there's uh, a Ramzan coming up, right? You can use these vacations to uh, your advantage and uh, really excel in step one. Uh, read first aid at least twice before dedicated period. You don't want to buy your world prematurely, right? And in fourth and final year, allocate four to six months for dedicated study. Like Amir Bhai said, that's the time where you move on from uh, lecture phase and Kaplan phase to first aid and UWorld. And you just do UWorld, first aid and NPMEs. And if you get a good score on NPMEs, you take the exam. Uh, so that's all from my side. In the end, uh, your, your story is unique and so, so different and not worthy of comparison. So do not compare this with anyone. Uh, I remember uh, there were about 30 students in my class who started in first year. I started in third year. Only uh, three of us in our class uh, were able to take step one before graduation. Uh, so yeah, don't ever compare uh, your journey to uh, anyone else. So yeah, back to you, Amir Bhai. Thank you so much, everybody. Oh, thank you, Ryan. It was like amazing um, presentation. Thank you so much for a well summarized uh, review. I think this uh, session will be uh, recorded and I think this will be very helpful for other people too. So um, thank you for this. Uh, with that, I will